Welcome to Season 2 of All Things Music, where I'm giving you, the viewers and listeners, an all-access pass, and I'm pulling back the curtain on the music business. I've reached out to all my music business friends, and they've agreed to let loose and be real with me. So all aspects of their career, relationships, big wins, and hard losses, nothing is off the table. You never know where these combos will go, so hold on and let the hangout begin. Tonight, our guest is Mike Clemens, otherwise known as Big Mike Clemens, but not so big anymore. We can't wait to talk about that. He was a drummer for Aaron Hall, Usher, Mary J. Blige, Drew Hill, SWV, and Israel Houghton, to name a few. He also produced hits for some of the same. So welcome backstage where we'll find out all the good juice on Big Mike Clemens. Welcome backstage. Let's check it out. Oh, we got Big Mike in the house. What's up, hey. Mike? <laughs> hey, man, how you like that song, bro? How you like the song, bro? You know, I like it, man. It's, uh, I like the little funky there. Yeah, I'm, I look, I'll send it to you. Give me a little James Brown a little bit in there. You know what I'm saying? I, look, I'll send it to you, man. I'll send it to you. Look, that, look I, I, know that, I know it don't mean too much to you because you got a whole bunch of them, but that's a Grammy-nominated song right there, bro. That's a Grammy-nominated song. Right <laughs> hey, hey, listen, man. <laughs> Anything can be a Grammy-nominated these days. Oh, no, 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 no. But this is real. This is real. This is real. This one. <laughs> you, you, you're wrong for that, Mike. You're wrong for that. <laughs> you are right, but you're wrong for that in my case, okay? <laughs> no, I got you. I got you. So I yeah, love it though. Yeah, man. So look, man. Uh, whenever I got, I got a thing. Um, that when we start up, when we start off, it's called "I la manger." So I, I just need you to say it because I know most people can't can't do the whole Creole French thing. So it, it's pretty cool just having you figure out how to say it. So "I la manger." Well, you you international. "I la manger." Let me see if you got it. "I la manger." Eh. "I la manger." "I la manger." Mon manger. Manger. Moje. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's doing what it's supposed to do. <laughs> so, so, so what that means is, la, that means let's eat, right? In, okay. in, in okay. Creole. In Creole. Allons manger. Allons hey, manger. Allons manger. Mon, manger. Allons manger. Manger. There you oh, go. Perfect. Allons manger. Yeah. Manger. You got to get that on, oh, that mon, mon. <laughs> Oh, mon cher. I love mon There you go. There you go. I like when your voice get deeper. Uh, you say. Yeah. I love mon cher. I love mon cher. Hey, hey. I love Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> so, um, so I love mon cher. So what that is, man, is I like to have a little, I have a little segment in which um, I ask my guests, what is your favorite food in the whole world? Wow. Favorite food in the whole world. Okay, I'll bet yet for your I case, have... what used to be your favorite food? <laughs> I know, right? Ooh. Um, favorite food. If I have a favorite food right now, on the healthy side, I'm gonna give you two different ones. Okay, on the okay. healthy side, it's gonna be some type of fish, uh, like a, a whiting. Um, I'm real simple. That's the thing. It's it's hard for me to answer that now because. Um, the, the new mic is just straight, simple, clean. Yeah, we, yeah, we, and we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. That's definitely in, on, on the gluttony mic. <laughs> the gluttony <laughs> mic. <laughs> gluttony <laughs> mic. Um, I love. I, I like chicken parmesan. Oh, okay. Parmesan, Italian. Yeah, I, I like Italian food. I think it has a lot of flavor. But then, depending on what day, I like. So, I mean, yeah, it depends on what day you catch me. Okay, so now nice. I never have a feel of I, I don't have a favorite favorite. It's hard. That's that's hard. Well, and, and we'll get into that. Don't worry about the food thing. We'll come back to. Okay. We'll come back to. So, gotcha, well, but gotcha, so, gotcha. so so the second part of that question is, what in in the coronation, right? What has been your go to food? Go to food in coronation. Uh, I would say my go to food has been. Fish and veggies. Okay, that's cool. Like and tuna, we'll, like tuna, fish, yeah. you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and, and we'll come back to that because to go any deeper will be to go into a segment that we want to talk about later. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, 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 okay. So, growing up, Big Mike Clemens, right? What What does that mm -hmm. look like? At, at At you know, when did you find your love for music? 
for as long as I can remember, honestly, um, I would say at the age of six, seven, um, you know, I mean, from, from, from the stories that I remember and the stories my mom has told me, mm-hmm. you know, the pots and pans, you know, growing up and, and taking her pots out, you know, and sitting in the kitchen and playing with spoons, all yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff, you know, I, I, I always loved noise. I think that's what it was. And the noise drove the interest of what's that, you know, especially as a kid, you know, it's like you hear something, it's like, okay, what's that? And I think for me, it was um, fascinating to see everything move at once. Yeah. Oh, you know, and, and if you and, ever seen him play, you, know you understand what, what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so it was really cool. Right, right. Exactly. <laughs> and, and I think um, that began the love of me, you know, being interested a lot in into what drums can do and how I how I just grew up just and just kept my attention just stayed on drums. Man, that's fire, man. I, I, mean, I mean, I can tell you that the same thing happened for me right around five years old. Um, drums are like an intro instrument for everybody, I believe. You know, unless you unless right. you, unless your parent was like a guitar player or a um, piano player, and you had those around the house. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. But for the right. most part, drums are everybody's introductory instrument because you could, you know, you could play. You know. Right. Uh, Hold on. Tell her, tell her I say hey. Hey, he, he said hey. Hi. <laughs> she said hi. I'm sorry. Yeah, we heard. Oh, yeah. You're fine. Yeah. She forgot. She was. She's in. She's in cleaning mode. You, bruh, bruh. You know what? That's a beautiful thing. That's, yeah, that's a beautiful yeah, thing. Right. You got. You got a wife. Gotta be my boss, though. So. You. Hey. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shoot, sure, because I, I ain't gonna lie. Now you could talk. What you say? Over there, totally. I brought. I, I didn't touch none of it. He had. He had brought that stuff down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. When you got you got a wife that cleans, man, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. You know, yeah, like like yeah, I like she's, I said, she's I want to. She's, she's the everything to me. I was like I, I was like I want to be the dirtiest one in the house, cause I'm not dirty. You know what I'm saying? I'm not dirty. So if I'm the dirtiest one in the house, we gonna be all right. It's a problem when, right. when when the other person is dirtier than me. That's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm the same way. I'm the same exact way. Yeah. So anyway, man. So it, it's a beautiful thing. So, so, so you, you at 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 six, seven years old, you figure out you like drums, right? And so then, yeah. so then, when's the first time you actually get to play drums? How how does that metamorphosis happen? Uh, I remember um, playing in church. I remember um, wanting to play at church. And the church I grew up in was always, you know, sometimes back then. I'm not sure if it was where you're from too, but back then. Like the older ones, kind of sunned the younger ones. I got you know, so it was you, like you had I wanted to, to play so you had bad. To fight but for your spot. I had to fight for it, and um, and then you know, at, at the same time, God gave me a gift. So it was it was a cross between this, this guy is advanced for his age, but nobody would let me play because it's like when I play, it drew attention. Yes. So it was like, okay, let me, you know, so I had to fight for that for, for a couple years and, you know, until, until things started happening, you know, uh, a different way. Right. And what is that different way? A um, different way was really just me um, getting noted, getting noted, get, getting noticed in the church, but also just in the local areas as well, you know, um, playing at concerts, playing for this choir, that choir, you know, that kind you know, growing yeah. up. And I think that has um, really gave me um, um, a, 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 a early start of, of people knowing who I was locally and right. also getting the experience locally. Okay. Yeah, that's sweet. And so, so that lasted. So, so you, so you, did you grow up in a family um, or in a household in which you couldn't play that devil music? Um, no, that, I didn't grow up like that. Nope. My, my mom, you know, never, I don't, rem- I don't remember her saying we can't play that in the house and she was real churchy, right? you know, but I don't remember her, um, you know, if, you know, doing, you know, really doing that in the house. I don't remember that at all. You know, if she was, she really, you know, and then she was going like, we had a little boom box. She lived, she really let us do a lot that you know, we wanted to do on she really did. It was. It wasn't a strict house. She never. I remember her not wearing pants and makeup. Right. You know, at a certain time. But as far as 
Don't do that. Don't do that. You know, she never, she wasn't like that. She supported us in music. And, and, and when you said brother. us, how, it's, just, it's just two y'all? Yes. Yeah. Just two of, well, me, me, my brother, and my sister. So we grew up in, I, got, I have uh, two sisters, actually. One half sister and one, one you know, full Four. sister. <laughs> right, 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 right. And, and, um, and one um, didn't live with us. Um, but but my, my, my sister, she did. And uh, so I grew up with her as well. Yeah. And, um, and music in the house. Okay, so I your brother plays? Music going up. Yes, he plays bass, plays drums. He, he, he's actually started me into producing. Oh. Yeah, so, so everything I produced, 90% of it was with him. You know, we were called the Clemens Brothers. Oh. So all the, like the Tyrese, the Drew Hill, that stuff, we, that was with us, both of us. Okay. Uh, well, since you went there, that, that's the vibe. So, uh, <laughs> look, look, since you went there, so uh, I, I understand you're a producer. How did the, so, so, so you playing, and see, we skipped a whole bunch of stuff we're going to have to go back to. Let me make a note while, while you say that. So, um, okay. uh, go back to, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, so producing all these artists, right? But you know what? Right. Don't worry about it. Since we missed, let's go back. So, so you're playing in church. Right. And how does playing in church turn into playing for Usher? Or who was your first out of church Famous band, or did you did you go straight from the um, church to the famous bands? Did you go straight to from the church to like the club bands to the to the cover bands? What what was the process to get to your first major quote unquote major show, major um, artist? Really, it, it was you know me and my brother was playing. We played local because we had a group called um, Inspiration back in the church group, almost like permission and you know you know stuff one like word that. and we we gotta have one we, word bro. We, were, we gotta have one word he has got commission you know what i'm saying it gotta be one word right. <laughs> right. and you know we were in it and he was a bass player i was a drummer we had my friend tommy and and, and so it was, it was really cool and from there we, you know we would travel even playing with you know local choir called connecticut match youth which which that choir really got us to playing in different places like New York and things like yeah. that. And we um, have known Stanley Brown from New York for a while. Um, and and when we got him, he contacted us one day and said, hey, oh, it's having a audition. Why don't you guys come down? So we came down as a, as a band. We came down, you know, and, and he hired us, you know. And so Aaron Hall was our first you know, major artists that we've played for. Um, and from then, it just kept going. So you're playing, you're playing with a church band, and then mm -hmm. somebody sees y'all, and then Aaron Hall goes, I want them. Yeah, it was Stanley Brown's the one who... who, who Stanley was Brown's the M He was the MD? On. Yeah, Sam, yep. So he's the one who, who, who was holding auditions, and he, he called us down there. And we played, and they loved it. And, and he, I think he knew that they would love it because we knew him as well. Yeah, he yeah. had the advantage, but he also wanted, you know, a fair chance. You know, baby, but a lot of people were there, of and course. they picked us. Yeah, but but and, he um, he knows what Aaron he knows what Aaron likes, so that's why he called right. y'all specifically. Right. And, yeah. Um, and then from there, it just it it went up and up and up and up and up from 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 the Aaron. Uh, and my brother was. He wanted to experience the road, but he was he loved producing, so he didn't want to be on the road like that. He did it for a little bit, and I said, okay. He's like, I'm over. I'm gonna stay home. Yeah, I'm over it. I'm gonna stay <laughs> home. And um, and I, from that from that gig, I went to Mary J. Blige, and from Mary J. Blige, I kept going and going and going. So uh, so yeah. so for those, this is called all things music, and so it's like we talking backstage with minus all the other people and the loudness and the you know, right. and depending on which gig and all the weed smoking and drugging and people, depending <laughs> on which gig, without all of those, you know, interferences, <laughs> but it's like a backstage right. conference. So, so how do you, so you, you switch artists when the tour ends or when another artist sees you, Does, is that always a smooth transition or has it been for you? What is it usually, you know what I'm saying? So you plan, for, you plan transition. For, um, I'm playing for Aaron and we, 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 we rehearsed to go over to um, Europe. Uh -huh. We did that, came back, did some more rehearsing. Um, and uh, Mary J. Blige's MD came into the room. Who came to visit, say what's up to, you know, family and people like that. He came to visit. He came in, I guess, at the right time where I was stretching on the drums. <laughs> and when he heard me, 
um, after that, I never forget. After that, he came to me and said, "Hey, listen, I want you to come over and you know basically play for Mary. Like, you know, the gig is yours if you want it. Like, it was just like that." And I was like, "Wow, well, dang!" That I had a choice between do I stay with my bros or do I leave? And, and they were like, "Yo, go because right. that's the opportunity for you." And you know, because you know, you never want to leave your, you know, your people. Yeah, but yeah. they were like, "Nah, do it. Trust me. You, you, like this is you. Like, yeah." And my brother was already like, well, "You know where I'm at. I ain't trying to be out here like that." <laughs> so like, it was just like it was a it was a smooth transition. I played. Um, I heard. Um, I heard. I had actually heard the show a couple of years before from a previous pre- a previous tour that she had did. She had done already. So I had already kind of knew some of the music. So when they started playing and. And some of the stuff sounds familiar. I started doing it with them. They were like, "What? Looking at me like, how you know this stuff? You know?" So it, it, we 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 really gelled. We really um, uh, uh, it was a connection there. And then when Mary heard me, she was like, "Hey, I love it!" Like, and just it was great. And I just you know they heard that tour. That was the um, my life tour. My life, my, my life, tour. my life in the yeah. sunshine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did that tour and then I did um the Share My World tour as well. You know, that's when the live album came out. I did it. Yeah, man, that's fire. So um man, that, okay, so that's how you went to you went to Mary and then from Mary you went to Drew Hill, back to my brothers. You know, Drew Hill. Oh, your brothers we, we, were we, Drew we, Hill? Um, Drew Hill, yep. Stanley Brown put us on Drew Hill too. They had just come out. Island Records, Island uh Island Records had just, you know, I guess that was a new label back then. Okay, yeah. And they were the first group, you know, tell me, tell me what you want. Yeah, yeah. Get ready to come out and everything. And and we we um we were the MDs for for them for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. And, and we also um and from there we just um and then my brother was like, I'm I'm really done. I don't feel like doing this no more. Yeah. <laughs> we I went everywhere, I did a whole lot. He was like, you know, we did about two or three tours with them. And okay, was, now, now okay, pa- pause on the tour. So that was with Drew Hill. We did the tours. Yeah. So where? So so at that point, this is your your third band, your third national mm-hmm. touring artist, or or were they international at that point? They were they were getting international. They were they were they were national, but they blew up, started blowing up fast. Yeah, but Drew Hill was, was started being national. Mary and Aaron was national. Oh yeah. Okay. They, yeah, yeah. They, they were. Well, they were. It, yeah, yeah. They were. Yeah, I would say that. Yeah, they did it. Mary didn't go international until after after you. She went into. I didn't do. I didn't go international. No, I, she did go international. I did tours. I did with her was international too. Because she was my life was huge for her. But she was already international. Okay. Yeah, and Aaron was already international as well. Because we, you know, Europe and things like that. And from the group guys, so he was already. You yeah, know, yeah. 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 Okay, sweet. So then, so your brother's like, how many times can you see the world? Right, basically. He's like, how many times can you see the world, bro? Really? Yeah, how many? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've yeah. seen, I've been he, to all the main country. thing with producing, he wanted to really get into, um, you know, really producing. He, and at a young age, he had introduced me to it just locally. So he was like, man, I, I need the real money. <laughs> yeah, because that's what the real money is. So, so, so Visual. Yeah, in they call, I call it mailbox money. I'm sure a whole bunch of other people call, call it mailbox, mailbox money. money. Um, and and that's that's something also for people who are watching. That there's there's levels to this, and there's different um, different areas of the music business. Um, and 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 people see the people on stage touring, but um, n- now that I'm thinking about it, can you talk about how there are people on the road? Not necessarily you. If you have an experience you want to share. How there are people who are on the road doing huge shows, but they ain't making no money. Did you come across artists like like uh, not artists but uh, instrumentalists playing for artists who you know personally was making six figures on the show, but their band members were making like two hundred fifty dollars? Okay, okay, yeah, definitely. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, when art if if the artist is making a hundred grand a show, two hundred grand, whatever it is, I feel like. The the show is all the band to me a band and your whole every your whole back the back of you period is a big part of the show. I mean, yeah, people yeah. come to see you because they love you, but what makes the show is also your band and your dancers and everybody. I feel like everybody should get a good amount of money, not just a hundred dollars a show or two hundred whatever. You know, I think it should be you know if you're making 
three, four hundred or five hundred thousand dollars a show, man, you can pay these people a couple grand a show. Easy. At least. You and, know what I'm saying? Not even you feeling. can, you know. Yeah, but not because even I think it's changed so much because of people being desperate and people being the young guys coming in and want to get step less. So it makes it hard for someone like me who they call a veteran or, or right. you know, to come in and, and to say, well, I want this amount because, you know, you got, you know, a homeboy over there who will do it for less, but but then you don't get the same, you don't get, you don't get the, not, it's not the same uh, drummer or, or not the same musicianship that you're going to get professionalism and, and, and uh, um, how you say it, more and more of the, uh, the knowledge Right. You know, from coming from someone who, who who's been out there, but you're gonna get, you know, what you pay for. Right. You know? right and that's right. how I see it as as musicians now. It's like we go from, you know, like I, I would love to char- you know, go out there and get what I want to get, but then you have people who would do it for half of that and half and half and half and half of that. And it keeps so on it going. It, yeah, it makes it so it makes it hard for now. And it's harder than anything than now. You know, you gotta pay for a huge, huge artist, you know, or like these new artists coming out, you know, not gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yeah. The budget, you know, no. the fame. First thing they say is budget. First thing they say, well, you know, this is and they want to do audition for new guys because they're gonna charge. You can pay them two, three hundred dollars a show, and they would do it. They would do it for free, right? Just to get out there, right? And, and and you know, you can respect the hustle, but at the same time, you're like, bruh, there's a standard. Yeah, there's a standard. Yeah, it has to be. It has to be a standard, and no one. No one um, understands that anymore. It, it, it's all about you know YouTube and outplaying this person, outplaying that person. And there's no standards of really going in there with with dignity, going going in there with with um, um, the knowledge of of being under someone who can teach you. Right. And, you know, nobody wants to hear that no more. They, all they want to hear is how can I take your head off and how can I play better than you or how can I you know get this money and but you're not getting money. You can get a lot more money if you do it right. Yeah, yeah. So. And 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 they really can't. And, and, and it's and it's hard to show somebody that. It, it they yeah. uh, and they. The funny part is they the piece is they usually get it, like way late. You know, mm-hmm. they usually get it way mm-hmm. late in life, and that that that's always amazed me as well. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So, you're right. Uh, oh, I I I got distracted by the lights. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh man, you said something that was really, really good. Back up the tape. Back up the tape. Um, uh, you told, so you, you you said you get a you get a, a experience and in, in person, and they're not making the money, but they think they are. Oh, that's what I wanted to ask you. So, do you find that um, artists, not artists, but uh, musicians these days? Because I just want to check and see if it's just me. Musicians these days don't listen. Like when I yeah. say when I say don't listen, I mean not only do they not listen to wisdom, <laughs> but they don't listen to the ensemble. They don't listen into the ensemble. Do you find that's a true in your experience of dealing with you know uh, more musicians on a regular basis than I do? Yeah, I think um, you the know younger guys. Is, they don't always listen to wisdom. They, it's it's about. You know, well, the first thing they say or may say, you know, is nobody said it personally to me, but they may say, well, you know, it's different now. And, you know, it's changed now. And things has changed, but things only change because I feel like it's changed because you've made it change. The younger right. ones made it change. It wouldn't have changed so much if, if it was say, the standard of the Ricky Lawson's and the you know, you know, you know the people that that came before us that that had put a standard to it. We yeah. all could be making four, five, six, seven thousand dollars, eight, ten thousand dollars a week if we would have kept it that way. You know, but because the young come in and they they're undercutting because they want to get on so bad, it it it, it, it made that change big. You know, so it, it chopped it. You know, more than fifty percent lower. You know, and I think if they listen to the wisdom, listen to the standards of that we had back then, you know, saying don't accept this, don't accept that, and it's okay to walk away. It's okay because if you if they want you, if it's for you, if God has that gig for you, th- then you will do it anyway. You see what I'm saying? Oh, for sure, for sure. Now, and and on the same thing about listening, 
do you find my, my, my? I guess what I was really trying to get you to that's the, the wisdom was was listening to wisdom was one, but do you find mm-hmm. that they don't listen into the ensemble musically? Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, you know, um, one one thing that I try to, I think it's the production side of me as well. But I'm a musical. I come. I, I say I'm a musical. I listen to everybody, everything around me, <laughs> and um, I think it's important. Constantly, for you're constantly listening. Musicians, say it again. You're constantly listening. Yeah, yeah, you have to because you gotta know your placement. You gotta know who, who's doing what. Uh, a lot of times, I've done even records or we've done live shows where a hit or a, a line may have come from something I've done. Or I like I love vocals too, so I will listen to everything and I may accent something with what somebody is doing. You know, because it's just it's just hearing the music, making it beautiful. It's supposed to be beautiful. It's not supposed to be. Just about you. It's supposed to come out beautiful. It doesn't. Something's wrong. <laughs> I don't care if you're playing nasty rap music, but with, with that's really right. guttural. It needs to be beautiful. It needs to be beautiful. <laughs> somebody's head has to go like this. Yeah, you know, that somebody has to be like. You yeah. know what I'm saying? There has to be that moment where they go, oh, you know. Yeah. And that, and that, and that, what you did doesn't always come from chops. It comes from just feeling good. Yes. Chops is, to me, chops is a extra. It's almost like working out and you start with your eating. Your eating is, is, and the working out part is the topping. So the chop is the topping is the icing. from you just playing, is the icing on it. Yeah. You got to play that groove. You got to play it right and make people, you can't make, if you can't make anyone move without you doing something, you know, a, a, a chop, if something's wrong. Ooh, wait. Look, like we in church. We in musical church. Back up. Say that again, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't make the average per the average person, yes. not musicians, but the average person head move to what you're playing without chopping, then something's wrong. Something is a hundred percent wrong. We're gonna have a because sale. musicians are gonna do, ooh, ooh, ah, you know, they're gonna, that's that's what the, that's what we do. But for average person coming in, and saying, man, this feels good. I don't know what it is, but this feels good. They can't do that. Something wrong. We're gonna just let them marinate. Might, might, you might want to reevaluate yourself. <laughs> <laughs> look, Mike. Hey, Mike. Look, I'm a, I'm gonna give two seconds of, of dead space so that they can say lot. Okay, so are you young musicians, <laughs> musicians, drummers, whatever? Because not just drums, it's not just drums. If yeah, you're playing the bass, anything. if you're playing the key, whatever it is, you've got mm-hmm. people have you know it's a feeling. You know yeah, what I'm saying? They gotta is. feel it, and 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 there's so much cold music today that you know, and 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 I and, and I, know, I know every generation talk about well, you know, back in our days, it was, it was, it was, but you know, mm-hmm. really, back in our days, it was the, it kind of it kind of stopped. But even with the digital music that we have today, it still it it has like because I don't really like the mumble rap, but the beats make you. They make you bop. Music, all this stuff, yeah, yeah. They make your head yeah. bop. Yeah. Yep. And so we'll. we'll Baby's so beautiful. I'm sorry. I'm, go, I'm already sitting, she's eating, sitting in the car, and the food smells good. I made a breakfast. Ah, you made a breakfast Taking today. Eggs. Ah. I made a eggs today. Yep. And she's just looking all beautiful, sitting across from me. So if I'm looking up like this at times, why? That's, hey, man, I ain't mad at you. Look, and when we come back, we'll find out more about all of that with the, with the, with the, with the wife, with the cooking, with the, with the new artists, with the tours, everything like that. When we, we'll be right back with Big Mike Clemens on all things music right here. Don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. Hey everyone, I'm Dee Dee McKinley from Christian World. I just wanted to invite you to join us online for our services each Sunday at 10 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We have a powerful time of worship, followed by an encouraging message from Pastors Jerry and Hope Snyder. You can watch on our YouTube channel, on our Facebook page, or on our website at christianworld.cc. Fried Chicken, a Lake Charles tradition with two locations to better serve you. We thank all of you for continuing to support us during these trying times. Now more than ever, we know how far our perfectly seasoned fried chicken, fish, or seafood will go to satisfy your cravings or just give you a little comfort. We are serving all of our menu classics to go until we get the all clear. So call ahead or stop by our Enterprise Boulevard and Common Street locations and get the taste you crave. Balls Fried Chicken, a 
Lake Charles tradition. Attorney Derek Key is a family man, a community-minded man with a heart for the people. His motto is justice is key. Key for fair and equal access to the judicial system. Key for rehabilitation as an alternative to incarceration. Key for the safety and welfare of our children, family, and elderly. Key is the man for our community. So on November 3rd, 2020, come out and vote Derek Key. District Judge, Division F, Calcasieu Parish. Derek Key. I understand that we had a deep connection Yeah And I appreciate the love and the care But right now you've got to let me leave Heads were, were, were bopping, so that music, mm -hmm. so that music works, right? <laughs> yeah, that that music works. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, man. So, um, so yeah, so you mentioned you mentioned your beautiful wife sitting sitting across from you now, um, but as many people may know, you were actually uh, married. But I think that's the next that's the next story, right? Because didn't you went from you went from uh, um, was it was Drew Hill? Did you go from Drew Hill? Mm -hmm. To uh, SWV, uh, I played with them for, oh uh, yeah, off and on. Okay, I so did. I played with them off and on. I did. I played with them um, in two thousand seven. Yeah, yeah, two thousand seven. You're right. Two thousand seven. I just, I just felt or, like that was the, that was the next that was the next band. You know what I'm saying to make the connect, right? Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I played with them and for I did. Uh, what was it? Oh, God, I can't think of the name of that album. You're the one for me, that album? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, yeah, I, yeah, I did that oh, tour. I listened to it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you what the name of it was, but I listened to it a lot. <laughs> uh, yep, yep. So, um, I did did that tour, and then um, and I only did that one tour, but after that, I went back to Mary. Oh, and okay. they shared my world. Okay, so... so so did you did you get you got you got married? When did you get married? And who were you married oh, to? Was, in in that in that group. Say it again. Who were you married to in SWV? Oh, it was Coco. Yes, Coco. I'm, I'm just yeah. I'm getting. I know. I'm like I'm letting you, <laughs> let you tell everybody else. So you married? Yep. So were you married while y'all while you was in the band, or did you get married after no. you left the band? No, it was uh, years later. Years later. Okay, sweet. Even yeah, years later. Okay, sweet. So then, so then after you married, so so that didn't you didn't tour with them too much as, after you got married to her, right? No. See that you don't yeah. mix, don't mix business. I'm, I'm messing. With, a lot of people can do business in pleasure. A lot of people can do business in pleasure. Because <laughs> like, right, 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 right. and I'm trying to tell my wife I need her to be a part of my business, so I I, I don't want to shoot myself in my own foot. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so then so then that so then that that um that that section of your life ends, and then you get the beautiful woman across from you now. And so, yeah. how did how did you meet your current wife? Ah oh, man, we were friends. Um, you know, she helped me with my business, and, and which we'll get to, know, which we will get to. Yep, for sure. she helped me with my business. It was really um, innocent. We were friends, and you know, she became um, how you say it? it was more of it was like she was hidden from me. And, you know what I'm saying? It's like she was hidden and in, 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 in plain sight. Like it was like she was right in front of me, but I didn't know it. And 
she, I mean, we were talking on the phone sometimes and things like that. And it became, you know, she asked me a few, few questions about, you know, just life and my mom and things like that. And, and, and the conversation started getting more deeper and deeper and deeper. And I realized that I couldn't stop thinking about this woman, <laughs> you know, and, and, and it went from us being friends to just, you know, going out sometimes and just gradually and now we're married. Well, all right then. Look, yeah, hey, yeah. When, when a man finds a yeah. wife, he finds a good thing and receives favor. There you go. I found favor. a great thing. <laughs> and he receives favor from the Lord. Yeah. Yeah, favor. Favor. I bow. Hey, yeah. all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was really cool, you know, because um, nothing that we planned, like she wasn't checking me out or trying, you know what I mean? It was nothing yeah. like that, you know. Once my, device, my, my divorce was final, we were able to really be free and really, um, you know, you know, she, been, she was there for me. Even going through the divorce, she was we were friends. She was and she was there for me. And she's not a rebound. So I want to just make that clear. Well, yeah, for sure, she's definitely not a rebound. You know, hey man, but, um, rebounds but, work. Rebounds work. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But but God but this ain't rebound. In my God put her in my in my in, in my life for a reason. He put her in my life, you know, to do more than just you know it's ministry. It's 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 a lot that we that we are about. And, um, and she's an amazing woman, and you know, and I, I, I think her to this day of, of 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 being there for me and and allowing me to 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 to, uh, to talk to her, but also allowing her to minister to me at the same time because she ministered a lot to me and she got me through a lot of things. Yeah. You know, so so okay. So since, a lot of stuff. since since we on since we on that on that track, how important is it to have a support system whenever you're a professional musician? And are you still a professional musician, or, or did your business take over? Take over. I'm still a professional musician. Um, business did take over. Hey, know, but I had well, to, we're gonna I go into that. <laughs> establish. Ex- we know when when music start becoming work. You know, um, okay, it becomes work. Kids, bills, and you know it, things change. You ain't, you ain't home with moms no more. So it becomes work and you have to set yourself up after. Like what 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 happens after the music is there you know because my and, and and then what happens when God is in what you're doing. Ooh. Meaning this, I'm about to break it down for you because from in my life it was I'm gonna play drums and that's it. Play drums the rest of my life and produce records. But God was like, No, I want you to, you know, let's just rewrite this story a little bit. I'm going to put you through this. I'm going to have you go through this. I'm going to put this person in, like that person, like all these things to, to help build you at the same time. You need stability. You need, you need, you need to be out the music industry for now to be able to, to build an empire that, because it's what I have for you. And instead so I will, when you come back to music, it's not for the money. It's, it's more of, okay, I can enjoy what I'm doing. See, it's, it's stressful when you got to wait for a check from an artist. It's stressful. Let's just be real. When you're waiting for checks for artists and, and you're out there and you, you're relying on the shows that they may cancel. Like, look at now. How many musicians are probably panicking right now? Well, I ain't panicking. Of, I'm not panicking. But I'm definitely, but getting, I'm definitely, I'm definitely out of work. Saying, I'm definitely out of work. Yeah. You know, Quote, it unquote, work. Quote, unquote, work. Yeah. Yeah. It, ha- it happens. And I think if you have no backup plan, if you have nothing that... You know, there's something in all of us, and God births things out of all of us. It's a matter of when do we accept the call? When do we hear him? When do we want to do his work and not what we want to do? Because like I said in the beginning, I just want to play drums. All I want to do, I didn't know I'll be, you know, you know, and doing this and doing that and having this business and really, really seeking God and really, you know, help and really have him build me to where he wants me to be for a bigger purpose. I didn't know that. I'm just thinking, you know, I'm going to play drums the rest of my life what I love to do. I still love drums, but I also my my my, my biggest thing is God. What what can I do to please you? Because if you're not making it happen, then it's not going to happen anyway. It will be temporary. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So for me, it was it it, it was you know, and and then you know, have my wife who is a prophet, who is you know, uh, someone who is amazing in church. Um, see my, you know, and I, I go here for a second. Even even my last marriage wasn't like this. It wasn't, um, it wasn't a push for the the God in me. You get what I'm saying? It was more about you know the fame and more about things that you know that musician things things that you know was was surface and not okay. What's in your heart? What's in your what? 
what, where is God taking you? What, what are you seeing yourself? See, and my wife, and not, and not even comparing it to, but it's, it's different when you get married because of a reason, but you're getting married. I'm trying to yeah, tread, tread like clearly. doc, tread like doc, tread like doc. <laughs> trying to tread like Tread, tread light, Doc. It's tread light. It's, it's a difference of getting married for a reason, but then God putting you together. Yes. You know, as as a unit, it's a difference. It's a difference. You know, when you get married because you know of what reason, or someone's pregnant, or or whatever, somebody makes you. You know, all so that how, kind of stuff. Whether you, when you, when when flesh puts it together versus when God puts it together. When flesh puts it, there you go. When flesh puts it together you. versus God putting it together, it's two different things. And when God puts it together, it brings out the things that and she saw stuff in me that I didn't know. She saw stuff in me. One day she was like, Why are you where are you running from? Like, you come on, running. You, like, you know, it's like she challenges me and she also you, you want, sure that you wanna you wanna elaborate on what you're running from, bro? Uh, or is that not is not is that this? Can, can we do that? You know, she was just like, you know, I see you, you know, I, I, I again I tell you she's see her prophet, so she sees things and, and she's accurate. You know, she hears from God, you know. She don't she don't play with God. It's not about her it's not about you know trying to become this great name no she really hears from god and she was like you know i just thought you know you're running you're running from your calling you're running from this and that and and she's like when are you gonna stop running and i had to sit and think like wow like who you talking to you know what i mean like right, you know, right, but but it was real it was a real moment and you know, me and her have a lot of real moments because for both of us we're about doing our purpose, making sure that God is pleased with me, but doing our purpose of what he wants us to do. And so we challenge each other. Like she's my best friend. She's my homie, you know, um, and, and I, I, I can't stress it. I can't stress it enough for men who are, or people period, whether you're a woman or a man that you're married to be with the one that God puts you with, because it's a big difference. And being married, we both were married. She was, she, she, she's been divorced too. So we both were with people that, God didn't, didn't put us together. He endorses marriage. Yeah, and that's the thing. And once you get married, he can bless it, but it wasn't right. something that he that he said that, that this wasn't your perfect yeah. route. You, cho right. you chose he, that right. He puts it together. It's the same thing with opening the business. When God opens that business, can't no man shut it. Right. Same thing with anything. You got to put that to, across the board. Period. When God does it, can't no one change that. If God don't do it, yeah, okay, I, you're doing a good thing. Okay, I, I you know, it's great. But when I do it, it's you know me being the guy when I do it, it's it's going to last. You're going to go through. You're going to go through some of the same stuff. Maybe you may have ups and downs like anything. But guess what? I'm gonna keep y'all here because I did this and I know it's your future. I know what you need. Right, right, right. Yes, uh, I, 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 met, I I got this corny saying that I do. I said there's a difference between a God thing and a good thing, and it's mm -hmm. it's one little but very big. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's, you, a, it's a God and, thing, and you, and you, and you add it. that extra yeah. O, and it's not just right. a good thing. It's just a good thing. And then God thing, now yeah. it's, a, now it's a, oh, that's a good thing. Uh, we take that O out, it's like, now nah, it's a God thing. But anyway, mm -hmm. that, that, that's, my little, that's my little thing, a little small thing. So yeah. um, so you, you didn't say what your calling was. Can you share that? Can you share what your calling is? Say again. Um, I mean, uh, yeah, you know, I, I know I'm going to yeah, you know, yeah. end up being on the <laughs> pulpit somewhere <laughs> you know I, I i do know that and god's really stretching me to that now he's challenging me i'm doing a lot of studying and, and trying to really you know make sure that i'm equipped enough you know i'm talking to someone who hates to read right so who, so you're talking about you talking about you know you talking about pastoring or um yeah yeah you know oh. preaching at some point um i know he's taking me there he's take you know um it's just a, it's a matter of when right you know but for now you know, I want to be prepared. I want to prep myself. I want to make sure that I'm I'm just moving the way he wants me to move. So. Man, I ain't mad. I ain't mad at none of that, man. So okay, so 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 you you got in line, and the, so the house is in order. Every, mm. Everything is in order in the crib, <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> right? So everything is in order in the crib. So uh -huh. now, um, so so you go for you go from from those to to SWV, and who are the other people? Tyrese was Tyrese a later. Tyrese, yeah, Tyrese was somewhere in there, like in the middle or something, just mixed in. In the middle, in, in the middle, never played for him. We produced for him. We produced the song on the okay. album. Okay, great transition. So, how did you go from playing to producing? Man, um, you know, I, I mean, this is what asked me this too, and, and I will say, well, if 
if you have not to toot your own horn, but if you if you have an artist that actually loves the way you play, the best way to 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 even try to get them to hear your music is say, hey, I got I, you know I, I do beats, I do music, you know, I produce too. Want to check this out? Yeah. Why would they Simple say no? Thing. Why would they say no? They're already loving you. They're already loving how you play. Every you know so. The, and that's how we always did it, even with Drew Hill, you know, Nokio and, and um, Woody would come down to my mother's crib. We had a studio, we built a studio in her basement in Connecticut and um, back then. And they would come down, every Tyrese has come down to record records. All, all, every artist we have produced besides Mary, every artist we have produced mainly um, has come to our studio to just record records. You know, we we, we developed friendships. We developed, you know, to this day, you know, oh. I'm still cool with with Drew Hill. If I see them, it's still love. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If I see um Tyrese it's love, if I see um Rough Ends it's love. You know, these people are still, you know, are cool. And I think that's important. Um character wise, but it's also important to, to build that friendship because um it's be sometimes beyond music too. Sometimes when you hang out and you're you know, I mean you talking about Drew Hill, they they stay days and weeks at the crib. You know, just you know, so I think musicians need to get into building relationships and not building just a, trying to get a check and you know you're more than what you what you what you think you are if you just dig into what you are come you on bro. hey hey man keep you can stay right <laughs> there keep going keep going because i that man i preach that bro i'm like life happens yeah. at the speed of relationship and your relationships will determine the speed and direction of your life mm-hmm. you same know? thing with any like if you look at musicians even like you know who these big musicians who may not be so-called great skill-wise, but they in these big shows at times, or or or, or they are great skill-wise, you know, or whatever it is. You and the average person, you know, especially you know the younger ones, oh, man, I could do that, I could do that. Yeah, but you don't have this. See, this gets you further. The relationships get you a good name. All that kind of stuff plays a part. If you want social media, cut from everybody, then who who who's gonna want to use you? You see what I'm saying? So that's why you know, you notice that there's nothing. You go down my time. Like you go <laughs> anytime you want. And if, I don't do negativity. I don't promote none of that stuff because I believe that people are watching you. And if people are watching you, you have to. It's about inspiring people. It's about you know uh, uh, um, giving a, 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 the right message out. And, and a lot of times people are 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 not doing that. They're on. This me, 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 and let me show you, let me show you, let me show you, let me cuss you out, come for me, but come for you. It's so, it's so beyond that. I think, you know, once you start growing up in, in no sense and really becoming, using social media for what it's, what it's used for and not for, you know, to get back at people or to get jealous or, you know, things like that. I think we, we still, we still can become even better people even that way too. Oh yeah, man, definitely. And so that, that, that was a good thing. Uh, that you were saying about about just you know about about holding yourself right, having your character on point, you mm-hmm. know, and making sure that your that your brand, which which is everything that you do, yeah, yeah, your brand, which is Sounds everything, scary. which is everything you do, yeah, it's easy to mess your brand up, but hard to really keep it and build it. You know, you can do one thing that will tear it, and you got to rebuild. It's like credit. You can do one bad payment, and next thing you know, your points down went down, and now you got to build on it's the same thing. That that is crazy. So so okay. So I had heard I uh, what before while, while I while I remember because I wrote down this question that I was about to ask you, but I remember this other question. Uh, Big brother Jerry, from mm-hmm. uh from Israel from Israel's band. Yeah, my man. Big, big brother Jerry, what's up, Big brother Jerry? What's happening, man? <laughs> um, and, well, um, we got a few minutes before we have to take this next break. But look, th- this is what I, I. So, do you remember when we met? You know. I do and I don't, but I think I, I it was deeper level. Yeah. It was deeper level, right? Yeah. So I, Cause when I saw your face, I said, I know him. Yeah. And I said, I know him, where I know him from. I, I was like, I think deeper level, I think. Yeah, it was deeper. The first deeper level. Very first one. But yeah, it was, yes. it was, it was the first conference. Cause I see, I found y'all recorded deeper and I missed. I'm, I'm sorry. So, okay. So, uh, big brother Jerry, right? So one thing he mm-hmm. told me, man, he said, um, he, I, we, you know, cause that deep, okay. So me and you met at deeper. So, so y'all, right. had, y'all had recorded deeper the year before. And mm-hmm. when I got it and I was, when I got deeper, I was like, man, this is the kind of music that I was wanting to do. 
because I, I had a I had a, a God moment and I stopped playing secular music in 2006. I felt like God wanted okay. me to stop, and that's why me and you are very similar. Because in, when I stopped, I was almost 400 pounds, mm. and and I lost 100 pounds in six months. And like I said again, wow. we're, we're gonna get to that after this next break. We're gonna get to it. But um, yeah. So so you and I you and I are kind, kindred spirits in that aspect. But um, but what? So then I then I, I had this vision to do Christian Zydeco. So I do a Christian Zydeco CD in uh, in '09. But this was back okay. in '07, I think when uh, '06 '07, I think whenever Deeper started, right? Mm-hmm. The first conference, maybe '06 '07. Yeah, 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 yeah. '06 '07, it's around there, yeah. Yeah, because y'all had done the, the album, and I was like, oh my god, this is this is me. This mm-hmm. this is what I yeah. And then I looked at it and it said. Recorded in Humble. I was like, Humble? That, that that's two hours from my house. Oh, oh, right, bro. Right. So when so when I saw that the deeper conferences was popping off, I was like, Oh, count me in, fool. There's no <laughs> way y'all gonna do anything and I'm not there, you know? Right, and, right, right. And and what I loved about about Israel and Israel Houghton and New Breed is who we talking about, by the way. Mm-hmm. So uh what I loved about Israel and, and, and that whole situation is that um you know, I don't know it. I, I don't know if all y'all are genuinely um, that way or not. But I've found out that you know since since then that you are. <laughs> but it mm-hmm. seemed like all of y'all were so genuine and so nice, you know. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, and and I know that Israel is like, look, this is the conference. We you know we not stars. We gon we gonna be servants. You know you 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 got you get what is it strength to serve. Right, right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> Strength to serve. And, and so y'all were all, you know, y'all were all so nice and everything. And I just remember, you know, because I, I, I grew up playing drums, but since then, I don't even, I don't even trip on drums because I didn't put the time in to become a clinician, and I knew I was always supposed to be in the front. Mm-hmm. So I'm the drummer that'll make your head bop, but I'm not gonna wow you with a whole bunch of uh, chops. Right. I, I'm out of there. Right, 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 right. My chop days. Gone, right? <laughs> Top days gone. Now one day, whenever you know, whenever I when I've played a lot and, and and acquired some some padding, then I'll get some drums and I'll start practicing. But that 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 ain't got nothing to do with nothing. So <laughs> at Deeper, it was a great situation because it was all kind of musicians and singers and artists. And what what I loved about it was there were the biggest of the big gospel artists. You know, there was also some secular secular artists that came through every once in a while. Mm-hmm. But yeah. but everybody just. Just like no, we real people, regular people. So the people yeah. that I met at Deeper are now the gospel music industry. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The people that I was going to Deeper with are now the gospel music industry, which is yeah. which is really cool. And that's okay. that's how that's how when you were like you were like I know this guy, you know, because I just reach out and like, hey, Mike, remember me? You know, I just try to just you know, because first of all, I love the way you play. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate it. Because when I play drums, I played big. And still today when I play big, I ain't going to be doing a lot, but it's big. It look big. Right, right, right. <laughs> right, 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 right. Ah, you know? <laughs> <laughs> And so, you know, when I met, you know, you stopped. You know, you gave me eye contact. You know, we talked. And it was, a, you know, it was there. You know what I'm saying? It was cool. Mm-hmm. Right, right. And, you know, and every time we see, you know, be like, hey, what's up, what's up? So, so uh, one time Jerry was talking to this little keyboard player. And he was like, man, the stuff y'all be doing, bro, man, that's, that stuff is killing. I, I, I just don't know, man. And uh, Jerry said, look, bro, we got stems for that. <laughs> He's like, we got stems for that. If there's a couple of parts you can't play, we got stems for that. Here's the thing. Right. Do I want to do life with you? If I don't want to do life with you, you on the first thing smoking back home. Because, mm-hmm. b- because we, are, we are together and doing life six days and playing two or three hours out of those six days, <laughs> you know, four hours, whatever, out of those, a few hours out of all those days that we're together. And mm-hmm. if, if I can't deal with you, you, you out, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, can, cause so, so can you speak to touring, bro? How, how is touring for, um, for all those musicians and- who, who think they want to be on tour? <laughs> yeah. It's the same way you have to, for touring, for people, for musicians who want to tour, I would say, um, it's about the vibe. It's about being around people that you can be around because you're on a tour bus or, you know, or a stage with these people that you can't stand. It, it makes it harder. 
you know, or or you're, you know, going back and forth, or you know, one person is just uh, like they look at me, you know, all that other times, you know, you're around each other for, you know, to the average tour, at, at least a month and a half, you're on a tour bus, so you have to, you got bumps, you have to be able to talk, you got to be able to be around each other, you can't sit in your bunk the whole time, and you have to sort of vibe. It's a, it's a, um, um. um it's, it's, it's almost like, you know, you're developing friends, developing people that you can, you know, a new, a new family, you right. know, that you're around these months and you have to treat it that way. You can't just think about yourself. You can't be selfish. You, you know, same way you do be at home. You can't just go to your room, you know, all day and sit in your room, you, especially and if you're by yourself, that's one thing. If you're a loner or, you know, introvert or that kind of stuff, it's cool. But you also, at some point, you still have to be nice have to be standable. <laughs> you, know, you, have, you have to be able to be around people that that can be around you. And like 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 Jerry said, if not, you know, there's there's sense for that. <laughs> we, we, we've sent people home. <laughs> <laughs> well actually so. <laughs> actually Jerry, actually Jerry was saying stems for if you can't play the part, if we like you and, and your vibe is cool, we'll have you on the tour. But but the, yeah. but the flip side of that is don't get it twisted. We got stems for that. Yeah, we will true. send we will send you it's home. True. <laughs> true, but we but we have to you know you have to be able to stand each other. You have to build it. You know that that's a big part. The stage is a few hours, like you said, but being around each other, you know, for the other, you know, eight ten hours, you know, is is important. You know, yeah. Can you, if you don't have your own room or your room with someone, you got to you know you got to pair each other up with with great people. Yeah. So so can we speak to to the touring situation? Because most people see a tour. And they don't really know what a tour looks like. So can can you go? First of all, let's back up. Before you can tour, you got to rehearse for the tour. Mm-hmm. So can, can yeah. you tell me what a whatever? See, because I, when I when, when I'm about to, when I'm about to break down to a lot of people, it's something that I just found out about maybe a year ago, something like that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Is uh when y'all rehearse for a tour or or to go and start playing with a particular artist. What what does a rehearsal look like? Because I don't I think people think you know you just come together play the songs and you roll out. What does a rehearsal look like? Um, so basically, you rehearse. Um, you bring the gear in. You know you get into the music, get that stuff going. You you start you start with um stems if you have stems and building the stems around you know what's going on and and, and you and you practice to it. Everybody practice their part. Come together. And um, and you start gelling. You start, you know, you know, seeing what you know what needs to be, what not, what doesn't need to be in there. How we can make this, and then segue to that, and then all that kind of stuff. You know, so it's it's a it's a rehearsal for at least a couple of at least two weeks. Okay, pause, you know? pause. Mm-hmm. For, first of yeah. all, I say pause. First, first mm-hmm. of all, uh, you said it. You said you practice on the music. You mm-hmm. they, they, they need you. No, no, no. Okay. You're good. You you practice on your music first. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then when you get together, you rehearse. Yeah, that that right there, that's mil- that's million dollars. Yeah, you practice you get first. Yeah, you get you, music first. You, you practice gotta, on you your know, own. On your own, you practice. Don't come to get together with us and then say you're gonna rehearse. You're gonna practice with us. Yeah, right, right. So can you speak to those musicians and tell them that that what what happens to somebody who didn't practice and came to rehearsal? What's what's the funny you know, what's the funniest not... what's the funniest story or, or the most tragic story you can tell about an artist who came to rehearsal and then wanted to try and practice? Oh yeah, you look at them like they're crazy, and you just point the finger. <laughs> <laughs> the point the point finger always works. I know my stuff. You know you you know and, and, you know and and because that 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 bad apple or bad apples will stick out, and you know and when they ask what happened, it's like uh. I don't know what happened, so and so. You know, <laughs> so so nobody has a problem pointing it out, is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. And, and sometimes they get. Has anybody ever got fired at a rehearsal? Yeah, sometimes. Um, yeah, I've, I've, I've seen that happen before. I've seen that happen before. And it's not nice. It's usually a whole bunch of cursing uh-huh. involved. And a, oh yeah, and a, oh yeah, and an arm and a and a and a, and a gesture. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now we, yeah. now now back to the rehearsals. So you you're saying you rehearse for two or three weeks. How long is a rehearsal? That's what I was really trying to get to. Um, so, it so, could be all day, eight hours. You know, it could be all day. Depends on how much you know. And depends, hey, when you got when you got the rehearsal, you know, hall for a week or two, and you know, you in there. <laughs> it could be all day. 
Yeah, and and that's that's because I just found that out. I mean, I kind of I kind of heard that it had happened, and you know, and then whenever I was at, at Deeper, I saw y'all, and y'all would come out for lunch, and y'all was hungry, because mm-hmm. y'all had been shedding all day. Yeah, yeah. you shed before yeah. lunch, and then you Especially shed with the record, or yeah, 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 and you shed after lunch, and you know, mm-hmm. I was like, so wait a minute, and then I was checking it out, and just because that was that was really good for me. Because I got to see the work that it took to get where y'all were. People don't really understand the work that it takes. You know, like the vocalists had their own rehearsal. You know, Daniel was over, you know, and I, I didn't even realize. I thought y'all rehearsed all together. No, the vocal in the morning, the vocalists were rehearsing, y'all rehearsing. Then after lunch, y'all would come together and run the show. And so like in eight hours, <clears throat> if the show is 45 minutes, just think about how many times you run the show. Right. Yeah. A long, a lot, a lot. <laughs> and if and if you got to rehearse for two weeks, and the whole purpose of rehearsing is rehearsing for two weeks is what? Um, to get ready for <clears> the <throat> one night or the tour or whatever you, you know you're gonna be doing. Yeah, I, I was just trying to get you to get to that thing so that because when once you know it, then now you can gel and now you can oh, start yeah. to you can start to grow the original set that you brought in. Mm-hmm. You know, right. y'all can grow it. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's the way it goes. And so now we now we know what a tour look what 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 a, what a rehearsal looked like. You show got, up, and so you know I got ten minutes. Got, got 10 minutes. you. You show up. You show up in there. You roll. You know. You, mm-hmm. you rehearse for two hours for eight hours a day for two weeks, and you get on a tour right. bus and you roll on a tour bus. And 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 a, a touring day, you show up in the morning. You set up and you do. You basically do the same thing all day until the show, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Chill out. What we do, and and then you you. You um you get ready for the show and then you out to either you stay at night or you out the next that night to the next place. Okay, sweet. So now that we all we know about all that, now ah here we go to the good part. When are we gonna get to the good part? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now uh you know we, we talked about the, the big mic the big mic thing. So mm-hmm. uh you know I told you about the weight that I lost. So you you used to be you had a weight loss experience as well, right? Yes. Talk about it. Um, so, you know, um, I've always been, from as far as I remember, I've always been overweight. And um, I got to a stage where I was almost 400 pounds and um, and unhealthy, you know. Thought I was healthy but and, and thought I loved it. But deep down inside, I think I really didn't love it. I think it was just what, you know, I love to eat and didn't know how to balance a healthy life, you know. And, um, of course, never had... At the time, never had all these problems, health problems, but doesn't mean that you're still not unhealthy, right? That's because because you're because you're at a, you got an you know obesity state, you know you're big, and so for me, um, I became diabetic, and then from from being diabetic had helped me. Um, actually, it was a blessing that I became diabetic. I believe if I didn't come become diabetic to this day, I either would be bigger or I'll be. Dead. dead yeah you know yeah, so hey, so yeah. becoming diabetic was a blessing to me and i used that as a tool to to lose the weight a tool to 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 hit me so i just say i, I want to beat this i was always a person that you know i want to conquer this i want to make sure i know this and know that you know and conquer things and that and reach this height okay now i'm gonna go higher and go higher i was that kind of person and so i wanted to beat diabetes and and so i went cold turkey Worked out, lost the weight. It took me a year. I lost about sixty something pounds in a year. Yeah, um, became a lot smaller, and and just became instead on that journey. You know, during that time, things hit me like you know, overactive thyroid and blood, you know, high blood pressure, things like that. Um, and so I had to overcome all of that stuff during as well. And I didn't want to take any medicines. I wanted to do everything naturally. I wanted to um, just beat everything. I wanted to feel great, and I did it. You know, by the grace of God, I did, and and it was the best decision that I made to to want to to prolong and add age, add add numbers onto my life. <laughs> right, right, right. Say, to, to make me live longer because of me being in a, in a healthier um state. Yeah, man, and everybody saw the pictures at the beginning at the opener, so uh, they they can see the difference, and so that that that's pretty cool. So uh, so you did that, and 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 that kind of led you into a business, right? Yeah, it did. It, um, one, I, well, I was always intrigued on on doing some investing, doing something that um, was a 
something different. And, you know, I was always interested in what juicing does and juices and how these things, you know, how, what, what does it do? Or how does it work and things like that? And what, what does it do not, what does it, what does it do naturally? And so when I came the opportunity, came across the opportunity to be able to um, be a part of uh, a prior juice bar brand that where I started from, um, that um, led me to where I am now, it led me to learn the business, learn how to juice, learn what it meant, learn how to deal with the store and kind of customers. I'm a people's person. I love people. So right. it allowed me to be in my element still um, and not knowing, but not even knowing then I, what I know now, meaning that I went through all this, all these health problems and, and, 90% of my customers have the same health problems. <laughs> Again, a God moment. Yeah, you yeah. Know, I was in a, <clears throat> and, and a part of the purpose, you know. So when, when I say God kind of changed everything for me, he really did. And people have to understand that sometimes you'll go through these things. On per, you know, God will put you, through, put you through these things for you to be able to create something or be a part of something that he can really use you for to save others that because you have been saved from it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you, we go through things for other people. Yeah. You know, and I, I think know. that was one of the best things um, that has happened to me. Not 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 <clears> for the money, but it's because I'm able to help people. And people, you know, to this day, people hit me every single day. And we ship out every day, you know, across all the states, you know, with our juices. And, give me, give me, and give me the address. Give me the address. People. Say it again. Give me the email. I mean the, the website. Yes, it's uh N Y O J B, not your ordinary juice bar dot com. N Y O J B dot com. Dot com. Okay, um, sweet. That's N Y O J N Y O J B dot com. Y'all do it. I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna order some juices because what what was that? What was that that it was a cleanse? What was it? Cleanse or what was it I was supposed to order? You I asked you about. Because I had seen oh, that you uh, shipped them out. You shipped them out. Yes, it was the um, our refine. It was like a, it was a four day cleanse that we do. Yes, four day mm -hmm. cleanse. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yep. so, so I'm gonna we get that. I, I'll, I'll get that, and I'll report on that. I'll report on that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I, I need to do a cleanse because yeah. I, I got to get back on it. That coronation got me messed up. Got me messed up, man. Got me messed up. <laughs> yes, yeah, it. So look, and, and at this point, beep, 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 beep. I don't have my sound yet. I don't have my sound yet. So I do it like that. <laughs> it's, right now we doing screenshot selfie. Okay, you ready? Ready? Uh huh. Three, two. One. We'll see. <laughs> <Let me> see. <laughs> okay, so I took a few of them. <laughs> I took a few of them. Okay, got okay. you, got you, got you. Yeah, yeah. So, um, because I didn't hear the sound, I don't know why I didn't hear the sound. So, um, so yeah, we got that man. We we doing ourselves. So now we on the last we on the last call. So, uh, because you got to roll. So look, so you've talked about everything. So right quick, do you still shed? Do you still practice? Um, not as much. Now, not as much. Just, I will be. Cause you got some gigs coming up? Mm, uh, not right now. Um, just trying to. Um, we got some stuff. You know, we in Israel talking about you know a reunion thing like that. Oh, well. sweet. So we've been, yeah, you know, we've been building on that. Um, but as far as you know, no, nah, and not really interested in really who's out going out. <laughs> oh, I ain't hey, bro. Hey, life not right now. You know, I'm really focused on building. You know what we have at home, and you know, you know. And, you know, you know, you know, Mary, have, I don't, you know, it hasn't been a year yet. So, you know, just, just you know, just really focusing on building my family. Your really foundation. Tight. You're working on the foundation right now. But just yeah. for, for all those yeah. drummers out there who are looking at Big Mike and saying, how do I get like Big Mike, get to that level? How much did you practice? You know, give me give me some quick tips that you can give me in a couple of minutes of, of how, no, how, did, how did you practice? What did you practice you can. And what did you practice on? I practice as long as I can. I practice as long as I can. Um, I practice on anything. I practice on what I don't know. Because you can practice on what you know all day long. But we, but I try to focus on speed. Try to focus on foot footwork. Um, just just kind of going off the dome. I practice a lot in my head even now. I, I do practice with a lot in my head. I, I do the always, same thing. You know, because hey, it works the same way. If you can visualize it, then whenever you actually get mm -hmm. on the instrument. You, if you visualize it enough, you can actually do it. Yeah. That is, that is serious theory. But don't take that theory. That's us on another level. You start off All with right. the sticks in your <laughs> hand. You start off with the sticks and the instrument in your hand. <laughs> and you, you, yeah. can, you can elevate to that point at some point. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, man. And so, so okay, so final, final question. What is a revelation that you can share with artists? What is some advice you can give to a young artist, a young drummer specifically? 
but mm -hmm. I know that what you're going to give them is going to uh, be able to be applied to any any area. But but get, give us give them give them something to, to chew on when they're thinking about their career. Young drummer, young artist, young young whatever. So um, what I would say to anyone you know young coming up and wanting to wanting to be great at whatever they are, whether it's musicians, office, um, you know, uh, whatever it is that you want to do, entrepreneur, um, is seek God first, um, you know, make sure it aligns up with what he wants and also um, work hard at it, uh, work hard at your brand and, and, you know, whether it's practicing, whether it's um, knowledge, whatever it is, work hard at it, be serious about it because you will go through your ups and downs and you have to, it's only the serious ones will, will, to me, will survive. You know, everything goes through a dry period. Everything goes through a, a high and low. You have to make sure that this is what you want to do because you will be tested on it. You know, whether, whether it's, there will be a test. <laughs> what do you say? What there, you say? There will be a test. <laughs> yeah. You will be tested on it and you have to be able to pass that test to get to the next level. Otherwise you're gonna go through that test again a different way. So make sure that it's something that you wanna do and make sure that you know you pray about it and ask God to give you the strength and knowledge for it. Yeah, because how many musicians you know that are still doing the same thing they were doing 20 years ago because they never learned the lesson? Yeah, a lot of, a lot of people. A lot of them uh, stuck in yeah. that cycle and, and, and they don't realize yeah. that they're the one that can get themselves out. But, yeah. But they won't it. learn we, the we, lesson. We are our worst enemy our worst persons our worst everything is us we, we we hold ourselves back god don't hold us back no. you can't hold me back i hold myself back because i can't get past of my devils or my the things i've been through or my past or, you know so all that stuff plays a part the fact that i never learned the music i just learned the changes the fact that i, right. that I never learned the hits i just learned the beat the fact that right. I, never, I never really know the music so if they got to start in a different point i don't really know where they at in the music mm -hmm. because i didn't mm -hmm. do my due diligence I'm speaking to these. Yeah, yeah. I'm speaking to these musicians who halfway do stuff. You know, you yeah. got, you got. Well, if you're tell. serious, yeah, you can tell. And it's the churches. <laughs> it's like that, you know. Really, and, you know, there's very few churches that actually learn or play a record or play something that's great and, and it's great. They always got, it. and that's something about adding your own thing. But play the essence of it. Play the. Don't don't take out the part that everyone loves because yeah. you want to put your part in. Right. You know, because I'm a producer, I want to do this. I want. I would do it this way. The but but you didn't get the Grammy. Yeah. You you didn't get the million sold. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I've been there, been there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you didn't yep. get the million sold. Why why are you talking to me? Why are you trying to change this part right here? This is what everybody know. Yeah. You yeah. know. But anyway, yeah. hey, Big Mike, I appreciate your time, bro. I know you no, busy. Anytime, I appreciate it. I know you busy, man. Thank you for coming to All Things Music, man. Look, hey, we'll have you back whenever you get to your next level so we can figure out what that is because, you know, as a musician, you also need to have multiple streams of income. That's right. Every, That's every right. successful artist, it doesn't just have make money on playing and singing. They make money songwriting, yeah. producing. They have other businesses because you have to mm -hmm. take your money and make your money work for you, right? That's it. That's it. That's it. You said it right. Yeah, you got to take your money, have your money. Away. Otherwise, your money just sitting there. Money needs yeah. to be moved and it needs to be working. When it's not working, you're you're, you're messing yourself up. That's right. Hey, all That's right. right. Reinvest. Co-sign, right. co-sign by Big Mike. All right, bro. So look, <laughs> hey, you, hey, you enjoy the rest of your day, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I, appreciate I, I, um, I appreciate you for coming in and and, and blessing the people. Y'all go follow Big Mike. What's your socials, man? Um, social media, I, I, G, uh, Facebook, big Mike Clemens, B I G M I K E C L E M O N S website, uh, not your ordinary juice bar N Y O J B dot com. Big Mike Clemens dot com is, uh, com is also going back up as well. Then I didn't even know it expired, but I found out. Uh, back up. <laughs> so what, so what was on big Mike Clemens dot com sticks and stuff like uh, that? Yeah, all my all everything about me and things like that. Yep. So I'm re I'm redesigning that you know, that whole thing as well. So it's gonna be cool. Sweet. All right. Well, until next time, hey, we'll see y'all. Thank y'all for meeting us and hanging out in the green room backstage. We'll holla. 
Thank you for joining us at All Things Music. We really enjoyed your company. And don't forget to tune in next week when we'll have UK artist Jamie Commons. Yes, that's right. You heard his music before. And when you tune in next week at 7 p.m. right here, we'll tell you where you heard it. So look, join us next week when we go backstage one more time. We'll holler All Things Music.